Hello everyone, we'll discuss here nutrition in pediatrics. In this lecture, we'll start with calories, then breast milk, formula, malnutrition, failure to thrive minerals, and finally vitamin deficiency. Calories. One gram of uh, carbohydrate will give you four calories. One gram of protein will give you four calories. One gram of fat will give you nine calories. Infant formula or breast milk, 20 calories per 30 ml. 20 calories per one ounce or 30 ml. This will apply to breast milk and formula as well. So again, carbohydrate, four calories. Protein, four calories per gram. And fat is nine calories per gram. Daily requirements of calories in full term and the preterm infants, the requirement is 100 to 140 calories per kilogram per day to grow. In malnourished children, they require more calories than normal children, which is 20 to 30 percent more energy for growth catch up. The daily requirement of protein intake is higher in preterm infants, is 3.5 grams per kilo per day in preterm infants and is less in full term infants is 2 to 2.5 grams per kilo per day daily protein requirements so again 3.5 per kilo per day in preterm and 2 to 2.5 grams per kilo per day in full term infants before we go further in this presentation, I would like to explain what is the difference between whey and the casein. Whey is the water portion of the milk that separates it from the curds. I added one spoon of acid to this glass of milk. As you see, the water portion is here is the whey and the casein is the coagulated white uh, of the milk. And this is what makes the milk white, the casein, and is 80% in cow's milk. Compare that to cholesterol is 90% whey, which is the water portion, to only 10% of casein in cholesterol. And in mature breast milk is 70% whey to 30% casein. And in formula, 60% whey to 40% casein. The easiest and fastest to digest is cholesterol, followed by, by, by mature breast milk, then finally by a formula which is 60% whey and 40% casein. It is contraindicated to give cow's milk in or regular cow's milk in the first year of life. Breast milk is the best milk ever existed for any infant in the first year of life. Cholesterol is the first milk. It is secreted in the first seven days after birth and the volume varies from 2 ml to 20 ml per feeding. It is okay for the mom to feed continuously in the first seven days of life, every one hour, every one hour and a half. Why? Because this milk contains 90% whey and this doesn't exist in any other milk and only 10% of casein. The less the casein, the faster the milk will pass through the stomach. The transition time is very short, doesn't last long. So the mom is okay to feed every one hour, every one hour and a half, continuous feeding in the first seven days of life. This will decrease the interior hepatic circulation, decreases risk of uh, jaundice or breast feeding jaundice. Also, this milk low fat content will stay less in the stomach, high levels of vitamin E and the protein, rich in immunoglobulin A. The immunoglobulin A offers a protection of the intestinal epithelial barrier by binding bacteria, toxins, and other macromolecules. This milk decreases the risk of necrotizing enterocolitis, especially in preterm infants, and also provides a protection against enteric and other diseases and naturally immunize the mothers. Transition milk follows the colostrum between seven and 10 days after birth. They gradually change from colostrum to mature milk is the transition milk. And the protein in this milk, immunoglobulin and fat soluble vitamin content will decrease. While lactose, water soluble vitamins, fat and total caloric content will increase. Mature milk comes after transition milk between 7 and 10 days after birth. And this milk is less in protein, immunoglobulin, and fat-soluble vitamins, similar to transition milk, higher in lactose, water-soluble vitamins, fat, and total caloric content. This milk is a reliable source of all nutrients for healthy term infants except the following, while exclusively breastfeeding. So baby is not in formula. If there is no formula, this baby will need vitamin D and iron. 
Vitamin D you start from birth with 400 international units daily after birth. But the iron start at four months. You can start earlier in preterm infants. How much? One milligram elemental iron per kilo per day once a day. For preterm infants, if the dose is too much, you can divide it twice a day. For B12, you can give to the babies B12 if the mother is a strict vegan mother and breastfeeding. If the mother is a strict vegan mother and breastfeeding. Here, with breast milk, the mature breast milk, the recommendation you can, baby can feed every two to three hours. Every two to three hours, especially in the first one to two months of life, even at night. So here, the volume will be at this time. After 10 days or 10 days after birth, the volume is sufficient. So baby can feed every two to three hours. So normally babies should feed eight to 12 times in 24 hours. Absolute contraindications of breastfeeding. The correct answer always for breastfeeding, yes, to continue breastfeeding. The exceptions are few. HIV mom, if the mom is HIV positive, she cannot breastfeed. Even if she's taking medication, regardless the lab results of uh, HIV studies, the viral load or other lab results. All HIV positive, they cannot breastfeed. Active tuberculosis, they can breastfeed after, after completion of approximately two weeks of appropriate therapy. But before therapy, they cannot, they cannot feed if the tuberculosis is active tuberculosis. This is a only short time after that they can start to breastfeed two weeks after completion of therapy uh, another rare uh, exception is galactosemia infants with classic classic galactosemia they cannot receive breast milk they have to receive a uh, lactose free formula so this is a rare contraindication to uh, breastfeeding galactosemia clinical approach to an infant with blood in stool unsuspected cow's milk protein allergy. If breastfed infant, complete, recommend complete elimination of dairy and soy products from maternal diet. If formula fed infants, it changes the formula to hydrolyze the cow milk protein formula. And after two weeks, it check the stool. Especially if the mom is breastfeeding, test the stool for occult blood to make sure the diagnosis is correct after two weeks. And if it's still positive, in this rare case, you will stop the breastfeeding and you will start the elemental formula. And if it's still positive or the parents is still seeing blood in the stool after using the hydrolyzed cow milk protein formula, you will change to elemental formula. And for insurance purposes, some insurances, they recommend testing the stool for occult blood in order to approve this type of formula because it's extremely expensive. Difference between breast milk and formula, the way to casein 7 to 3 and formula 6 to 4, and this may vary from formula to another, carbohydrates lactose in breast milk, in formula if it's soy will be lactose free, fat content per 30 ml, 28 to 49 grams, or the average is 30.8 grams in breast milk, 36 grams in formula, enzymes, it, uh, the breast milk has a lot of enzymes. I'll give a few examples. Amylase, lipase, protease for easier digestion. None of that in the formula. Hormones, erythropoietin, uh, insulin-like growth, nerve growth factor, relaxine, and others. This none of that in the formula. Anti-infective immunological, opsonines, enzymes, immunoglobulin, immunoglobulins, for example, immunoglobulin A or IgA, cytokines, none of that in the formula. The uh, difference here is important to know that vitamin D and iron are deficient in breast milk. That's why we recommend to start uh, vitamin D from birth and iron uh, from four months of life for uh, exclusive breastfed infants. But this amount of uh, or the vitamin D and iron is adequate in iron fortified formula. This is a 15 year old girl with a history of anorexia nervosa. She lost 55 pounds in the last three months. Her weight is below 30 percentile for her age. She was admitted due to lethargy and recurrent fainting episodes. She has a history of major depression and anxiety. In physical examination, her heart rate is 45 beats per minute low. Her blood pressure is 85 over 50 millimeter of mercury. Her temperature is 96 Fahrenheit. Her skin is dry. She has atrophy in both breasts. 
Her extremities are bluish in color, feels cold. She was started immediately on IV fluids for hydration and after aggressive introduction of calories via NG tube, her AKG showed arrhythmia. She begins to appear more lethargic and having a hard time to breathe. Her labs were significant for hypophosphatemia, hypokalemia, hypomanganesemia, and metabolic alkalosis. What is the most likely cause of her symptoms becoming worse? Refeeding syndrome, hyperthermia, septic shock, cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock. The correct answer is refeeding syndrome. We will know why in the next few slides. Major finding in cases of refeeding syndrome, hypophosphatemia, extremely low phosphorus level. Why? Because patients with poor nutrition already having low phosphorus. And when they are rapidly or suddenly fed or receiving high calories, this will increase the insulin level. Insulin will move the phosphorus and potassium to be intracellular. This will cause more hypophosphatemia, more hypokalemia. And also for energy production, the body will use phosphorus for production of ATP for energy. And this will cause further hypophosphatemia. And uh, with worsening of hypophosphatemia and hypokalemia, this will cause cardiac arrhythmias, weakness, fatigue, paralysis, hypoventilation or difficulty breathing respiratory distress and metabolic alkalosis. This is a six months old boy presented to you due to his pallor. He has been eating less and sleeping more. His only source of nutrition has been homemade goat milk based formula. On examination, mild tachycardia, pallor and CBC shows macrocytic anemia. What is the most likely cause? Vitamin B12 deficiency, folic acid deficiency, vitamin C deficiency, vitamin A deficiency, or vitamin E deficiency. The correct answer, folic acid deficiency. The key words here are goat milk based formula, consumption of goat milk based uh, formula, and this was the only source, and macrocytic anemia. This is a classic presentation of folic acid deficiency. Folic acid, causes of folic acid deficiency, goat milk intake, this is high yield on the pediatric board, Crohn's disease, sickle cell anemia, malignancy, drugs, phenytoin, methotrexate, uh, methylene, tetrahydrofolate reductase deficiency. Clinical presentation of folic acid deficiency, megaloblastic anemia, hypersegmentation, neutrophil, similar to cases of B12 deficiency, glossitis, listless or lack of energy growth retardations. If you have any child with macrocytic anemia and pallor or anemia, you have to test for folic acid and B12 levels, both together. Because if you treat folic acid deficiency and you have underlying B12 deficiency, the condition will continue to be worse. Association of uh, folic acid deficiency in neural tube uh, defect because of inadequate maternal intake during a pregnancy or before, even before pregnancy. Treatment, treatment of the cause and folic acid supplementation. This is a seven day old boy presents with continuous bleeding from the umbilical stump. His recent circumcision continues to bleed. He is a full term born via spontaneous vaginal delivery at home with a midwife. What is the most likely cause? Vitamin D or vitamin K or vitamin C or vitamin A or vitamin E deficiency. This is a vitamin K deficiency or hemorrhagic disease of newborn because he did not receive his vitamin K after birth. Vitamin K. Function of vitamin K maintains a prothrombin which is factor 2, factor 7, factor uh, 9 and factor 10. Common sources of vitamin K, dark leafy vegetables, soybean, bacterial synthesis in the intestine. Causes of vitamin K deficiency malabsorption like cases of cystic fibrosis ulcerative colitis, intestinal resection or bowel loss or short bowel syndrome, antibiotics, breast milk is deficient in vitamin K. Babies born at home and did not receive vitamin K after birth. Clinical presentation of vitamin K deficiency, hemorrhagic disease of uh, the newborn, common in homeborn uh, infants with no vitamin K was given after birth. Diagnosis elevated PT and normal PTT. Prophylaxis, routine vitamin K prophylaxis with 1 mg intramuscular at birth. Treatment, vitamin K followed by fresh frozen plasma in cases of hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. Having trouble or trying to pass the pediatric board exam? We have the definitive solution for you. 
presenting the Last Minute Review Series, a powerful tool for achieving success in pediatric board exams, crafted by Dr. Osama Naga, a board-certified pediatrician by American Board of Pediatrics and the editor of the Pediatric Board Study Guide, a Last Minute Review. Dr. Naga breaks down the most critical subjects in this series. The Pediatric Last Minute Review webpage offers a thorough and rigorous set of pediatric board review sessions that are in line with the study guide. The lectures will cover the most important topics for each condition that a pediatrician must know for pediatric board exams, as well as real-life clinical encounters. The inclusion of a clinical case scenario, accompanied by multiple-choice questions, followed by the most probable answer and a comprehensive description of the issue, will ensure test readiness for each student. You will be able to download the lecture's PDF files to make your studies easier, to take notes and be accessible on the go and offline. Based on the membership plan you choose, you will have unlimited access to the lectures for either one month, three months, six months, or one year. By viewing these videos, you will increase your chances of passing the board exam and gain substantial advantages from the acquired knowledge. Additionally, by studying the material and completing the AAP prep questions from the previous three years, you will greatly increase your likelihood of passing the board and will acquire a wealth of knowledge. Click on the link provided below to visit lastminutepediatric.com and subscribe immediately. Be sure to take advantage of our free video samples on our YouTube channel, Pediatric Board Last Minute Review. Good luck with your exams!